Well, Rafiana, uh, over here, it's uh, your title fight week. It's a different title, different opponent than you originally had scheduled. Uh, talk to me about the feeling coming into this one here in Hawaii. Um, I'm super excited about this one, you know what I mean? For me, personally, like it's way easier for me to get behind fighting Juan after Leather than it was for me to get behind fighting Sergio. Um, so I'm super excited to, uh, to get in there and, and put my hands on Juan. And so I guess, how did that all go down? Like, did you even know, like, as soon as it happened, as soon as Sergio got hurt, you must have known, he must have told you, right? Yeah, Sergio called me actually and told me uh, kind of when he got hurt. And then he was like hoping to stay, you know, uh, stay on the card and stay fighting. Um, but he had to talk to the doctor. So then, uh, so yeah, I knew like right when it happened. And then like uh, a couple, I think it was days or, yeah, a couple days later, um, he hit me up and was like, hey, man, the doctor, you know, I got the final word on the doctor or whatever, and you'll get news here soon. So, um, and I'm, you know, I'm gutted for him. You know, that's not the way, you know, I wanted to, uh, uh, it to go. You know what I mean? I had finally, like, wrapped my head around kind of uh, fighting him, um, you know. So, um, yeah, uh, but, you know, I, I'm, to, to, I'm definitely relieved to be able to uh, not have to fight him and fight uh, Juan. And I guess then the replacement, was it just Bellator kind of picked a name out of the hat of the other side of the bracket? Did they ask you, you know, which guy you wanted or how did that work out? No, they didn't uh, ask me at all. I think they uh, just picked a name. I mean, it, it's fitting because I feel like that's the fight I've been calling for. Uh, the, that's the fight I wanted just because he had the number one ranking and I just felt like he was maybe the, the toughest text, test next to Magomed. Um, or and uh, Horiguchi, so um, yeah, uh, that's the fight I wanted. So it just, I think it just happened that way. I don't know uh, what happened behind the scenes. Uh, I know, obviously, not fighting Sergio is something that you're okay with, but not being able to to capture the undisputed title is that difficult for you to wrap your head around, or is it? I know the interim title pay is pretty solid to carry it through the tournament as well. So does that make it? Yeah, like again, for me, so me fighting Sergio, like for, Sergio's like my boy, so me fighting him and taking his belt was kind of like me stealing his girlfriend. It's like, uh, you know what I mean? I, like, I just, even if, you know, uh, even if I would have won, uh, it would have left a bitter taste in my mouth, kind of, you know what I mean? Um, but here, you know what I'm saying, it's a whole nother girl, this interim belt, you know what I mean? So I could go out there and, you know what I mean, take that without no reservations uh you know what i mean so uh that's i'm, I'm happy about that i'm 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 happy to be the interim ch uh, champ until serge gets back you know that was my goal kind of from the beginning too to be Serge when when serge was the uh champion i was like man i want to just knock everybody off and then have to fight him you know kind of be his bodyguard but um yeah i'll just hold on to the belt until he gets back yeah, now it's, it's literally that. You could have the opportunity to knock off everyone. You said Juan Archuleta was a fight you were calling for for a while. Mm -hmm. Why? Was it just he's the, you think he's one of the best out there? Or is there something that you see that you can take yeah. advantage of? No, I thought he was the best out, uh, the, he was the best out there. Then also, um, in the meantime of uh, Horiguchi and, uh, and Sergio, when they were fighting back in, in December, um, uh, Bellator pretty much told me, like, I was next in line and, uh, unless I wanted to wait uh, or pretty much I could I could wait for the winner of that fight or I could uh like fight somebody in the meantime and I felt like the toughest test for me to fight in the min in the meantime was Juan and I thought that would be like a good uh opportunity for him to get back in title contention um but he just gave me like every excuse in the book why not he or why he didn't want the fight to happen uh which I was like perplexed and kind of like you know like like this uh, uh a sure way for you to get back to the belt like you beat me I'm considered like a number one contender you ranked number one let's you know get it on but uh, and that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Like, what? If, so you only gonna fight me if it's like for a title? Like, so you don't, you know what I mean? Want fight or what? But it's it's whatever. We fight now, so I'm happy about it. Hi, Rafian, reporting in live with Rafian Stotts. Uh, what's the vibe like in Hawaii over here? Man, the vibe is good. You know what I mean? Uh, I, it can't get any better. I feel like I feel like I got all my family here. You know what I mean? I feel like I got you know I know a lot of people here. I got a lot of teammates fighting. I got a lot of people I like grew up and everything is like full circle for me like in Hawaii because my first fight in Bellator was at Hawaii. Um, and then also I got Emmanuel Sanchez fighting on the car with me and my first his first round of the Grand Prix tournament uh, I was cornering him and that was the fight that I decided to uh, That I, I didn't want to fight John McCarty talk, uh, talked to me and asked me if I want to fight for Bellator and that's when I First uh, decided like man Bellator is like an amazing organization that I want to fight for so I feel like everything is coming uh, full circle
And you said, uh, you told me before the press conference how you would love to be in that setting. What could you take away from that setting and your face off with uh, Juan Archuleta? Um, the setting of uh, Juan Archuleta? Yeah, the, the press conference. You said that you. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would, yeah, I like the uh, press conference just because uh, Juan, you know, he feels like I'm uh, like picking on him or whatever. <laughs> I've heard he called me a bully or, or something like that. And that's kind of what I want to do. I mean, because. I'm literally taking your lunch money at this fight, you know what I mean? So I'm going to be a bully in a fight, and that's kind of my, um, you know, I'm not like a bully in real life, but um, that's kind of how I'm approaching this fight. I feel like Juan Archuleta is uh, mentally weak, you know what I mean, um, or weaker. He's a strong uh, individual, but, you know, I, I just want to, you know, take advantage of that. So, you know, I've been picking at him kind of uh, like the whole fight uh, camp or whatever. I'll just keep continue to pick on him, and in a fight, I'm just going to pick on you, you know, throughout five rounds. Do you feel like this is the people's main event in a sense? Because a lot of people are just talking about this more than the actual main event. So do you feel that way? Yeah, I feel like they um, they really are excited to see me and Juan get in it because we we, we possess a lot of the same skills. You know what I mean? Um, he brings the action. I bring the action. Uh, we both got good cardio. Both uh, are good wrestlers and um, strikers. So, um, so I think it's just a fun fight on paper to have. Um, yeah, so that fight. And then also I feel like that Yancey Medeiros and uh, Emmanuel Sanchez, I feel like it's a good fucking, you know, bomb burner fight, you know what I mean? Got a hometown guy, got Emmanuel Sanchez who's always fire, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I think us two are definitely like a fan favorite fights. Always good talking to you. Appreciate you too. It. Hey, Rafael and Jeremy Wilson here. Um, I, don't, I don't follow you on Instagram, and so I noticed you've been working with Eric Nixick lately. Mm -hmm. And so how long have you been working with Eric for, and what's that been like? Yeah, it's been great. I actually um, started this camp because I, was, I started having to fight uh, Sergio. Um, so we, me and Sergio talked and we was going to uh, have space for this camp, you know, because we we're going to fight each other. So I went to Eric Nixick's gym to, um, to train uh, through my manager, Sucker Punch. And he was like, he, he thought I would like, uh, like sync with kind of uh, Eric or whatever. And on the outside, I was like, I don't know, bro. He looked like a, uh, like a kind of a bro, like just a weightlifter, you know what I mean? But uh, I like Eric a lot. Like me, I feel like, like in the short time I get to know him, like I've, I like him a lot. I feel like we click, uh, and, and he's a he's a good dude. So for like for this fight, then specifically, do you have all of his coaches in your corner then for this fight? So for this fight, I have um, Eric Nixon is gonna be the head um, coach of this fight, but just because I uh, spent my my camp out there, and then um, I also got uh, Christian Rodriguez or Manuel Sanchez in my corner. Um, you know, uh, after their fight. Yeah, and so what's it like been working at Extreme Couture then, and what, what do you think that's helped change your game and evolve it? For me, it's been amazing because I've been able to like uh, have so many different partners, you know, from so many backgrounds, and a lot of the partners, I mean, to be honest, I, I trained with Lance Palmer, who's like Juan Archuleta's um, teammate, you know what I mean? So they got a lot of the, the same styles, and I feel like uh, a lot of the, the people there kind of train, um, or they got like an alpha male striking, or um, uh, kind of like a Dillashaw kind of training, which is like good for me, because that's what Juan tries to emulate. So like the, the, the looks that I've been able to get at um, Extreme Couture has been like amazing. And then also the routes that Eric Nixie has had me go through, um, have been like super amazing as well as like I've still been um, you know in contact with my coaches at Rufus Sport you know what I mean for like game planning and stuff so um, I feel like everything is you know it, it worked out really good for me this camp. That was another question I was going to ask and I was going to say like have you been keeping in contact with Duke and stuff like that and they've been yeah, like, giving um, advice I'm, too? Yeah I'm definitely still a Rufus Sport fighter um, and, and the, the agreement uh, originally was just me you know doing this one off camp here at uh, Eric Nixix but I like it a lot and I'm definitely coming back you know um, I'm definitely I'm going to have to figure something out I, I'll figure it out kind of after this camp I also had who was like an amazing help for me uh, Corey Sanhagen come out to Houston Texas uh, with Adrian Yanez and, and they gave me like amazing looks you know what I mean while I'm at home because I'm, I'm living in uh, Houston Texas so I got a lot of kind of figure out uh, about my training going forward but um, yeah off topic, last question. Uh, what's your walkout song this weekend and why? Uh, my walkout song is Two Chains, or I'm Rare by Two Chains, because I'm rare by Rafian. <laughs> Mahalo. All right, we're going to the chat online. Luke? Hey, Rufon. Luke from Empire Universe Media. Uh, first off, uh, good luck in your fight. And uh, second, uh, Looking at your opponent, um, I know you kind of talked about the mental weakness, but uh, what is it that makes 
you his dangerous, most dangerous opponent? Uh, what makes me his most dangerous opponent? Yes. Um, I feel like my mental fortitude, my athleticism, and literally every skill in MMA. No, uh, my striking, my wrestling, my jujitsu. Like I'm, I'm good everywhere. So, um, I, I feel like that's a that's a danger to him because I'm a little bit better than him in every one of those areas. I wouldn't say I'm like outclassing him, you know, or he doesn't uh, deserve to be in the same, you know, uh, place as me. Uh, but I feel like I'm just a little bit better everywhere. You know what I mean? Um, the only way, the only thing he's a little bit better at than me, I feel like is cardio. Like his style of fighting requires a lot more uh, cardio. So um, that's where I feel like um, he has the advantage over me. And do you plan on staying in Hawaii after the fight? Yeah, I'm definitely staying here. I got my family here. I got a bunch of sponsors here. I got some, uh, you know, some teammates that are from here. So I'm, I'm going to stay till uh, Tuesday, I think. Yeah. Next question from Dylan. Super Stats, what's up, man? Thanks what's for taking up? the time. Uh, Danny Sabatello constantly says that the bantamweight is that bantamweight is Bellator's best division and that the organization has the best bantamweight division in the world. I was wondering your thoughts on that statement. Oh uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's a true statement. You know what I mean? We got a lot of killers. We got a lot of firepower. Uh, we got a lot. It's a deep, deep division, really. I mean, they they had like some really big pullouts, but they still were able to, you know, uh, put together this eight man tournament with, um, you know, uh, some wild card guys that are like really good, you know, that have like really good chances. Definitely. And how did you enjoy it? You spoke a little bit about the press conference, but how did you enjoy Los Angeles last week? And what was it like seeing or hearing actor Jonathan Tucker behind you getting shoved by Pitbull while you were doing an interview? <laughs> that was crazy. At the time, I didn't know what was going on. So I was like, kind of like, I want to look, but I'm doing this interview type of thing. Um, but after I seen the video, that dude is fucking nuts. Like, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't do nothing like that to Pitbull, you know what I mean? Just knowing his history. But, uh, yeah, that was crazy. Next question from Kyle. Hey, Rafian. Uh, this is Kyle from the Going Live Network. Great to see you back. You kind of went from the underdog in this division to one of the clear favorites. Is that how you feel now? A favorite? Do you think you're still a dog in this? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, um, I feel like I'm a favorite, but, you know, I want to have the mentality of a dog or mentality of a dog, you know. Um, this has been like years of um, kind of years of sacrifices, just like uh, people are just starting to see, you know. I kind of been a dog, but, you know, I, I haven't really had an opportunity to like uh, showcase it, you know. Um, and the, the higher quality opponents, the higher chances of me being able to showcase you know what I'm truly capable of so um yeah I, I definitely feel like I'm the favorite and it's for a reason you know what I mean I'm the best in the world um you know and I'm an unmovable force and I'm going to be interim uh Bellator Bantamweight champion after this weekend and having a win over somebody like Magomed you know who has a win over Peter Yan who performed you know the other week is that something you look at too does that something give you more motivation um, yeah, it's like part of what's giving uh, me motivation. So I was like super motivated before. I mean, I mean, I knew I was going to be Morgan Med before kind of the world knew, you know what I mean? Um, so and it's, it's, it's a testament of like, you know, my training schedule, like who I train with, uh, how I do in training, um, you know, uh, as 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 I've gotten older of these last like two years, I've been able to cross train with a lot of people. So it's like opening my eyes on how good I am, you know, and just reinstilling that confidence in myself. So, um, yeah, it's, it's like a, the Magomed thing is just like another notch on the, the confidence builder. But uh, it is definitely a big notch, you know. <laughs> 